Welcome to a Stuart 7A model steam plant. This is part 22, making the steam turret. And the first part of the job is to find out how tall the steam turret needs to be. Using my steel ruler for scale, I've come to the conclusion that the centres of the valves need to be at 2 inches from the baseboard. I've made quite a few steam turrets in my time and the construction for all of them follows a similar pattern. The first part required is a piece of brass bar and then some steam valves to screw into the brass bar once holes have been drilled and tapped into the bar. In this episode, just to save time and because I've done it so many times in other videos, even recently, I'm not going to show the drilling and threading of the holes. Here's the brass bar after threading and in this clip I've screwed in place two 5 16 by 32 threads per inch blower valves. I also need to drill a small hole underneath to locate the column and at the rear of the bar I need to drill a hole tapping size for quarter by 40 threads per inch. The hole underneath the bar needs to be small. This is the centre drilled version. I opened it up to 5 30 seconds of an inch. And when I make the column, as you will see shortly, I machine in a location pin. These days I normally make steam turrets like this. I've drilled a hole right at the back of the steam turret and here I'm threading it 4BA. Why is the hole not drilled in the center? Well, if I did that, the hole would be automatically blocked when I screwed the steam valves in place. Here is the threaded hole at the rear of the unit, all ready to accept a steam union. The hole in the end of the turret needs to be permanently blocked. And to do that, I've inserted a 4BA bolt, after which I cut the head off it, and I'm going to run some silver solder over this to seal it once I silver solder the entire thing. It's over now to my old Boxford lathe and I'm fitting a commercial steam union into the chuck. I'm only gripping it lightly by the threads so I can't really take very deep cuts. I need to shorten one end of the union so when it screws into the back of the turret it doesn't block the steam way. Plus this part is going to be silver soldered in place so I only need a very small bit of thread. Don't forget if you're doing a job like this, very light cuts are the order of the day. If you take a very heavy cut, the whole thing will jump out of the chuck and be ruined. This side of the union is now ready to screw into the main turret. And it doesn't even need to be tight. I need to leave some gap for the silver solder. So that is about it for the main part of the turret. It's time to double check the height, which I think is possibly going to be just under two inches. This is a PM Research cast elbow, and as usual, I have to re-thread it. Apparently, so I'm told, the pitch is a bit wrong from the USA to England. I think it's because we use the ME version. ME stands for Model Engineering. I thought it would fit this union loosely in place, just to see what it looks like. I'm hoping to use the original steam pipe that goes from the superheater to the engine to feed steam to the turret. More about this in the next episode. Now I need to cut a piece of brass, and this is speeded up, it took ages. And why did it take so long? Well, for two reasons. One is, this bandsaw doesn't apply much pressure to the work, there's a spring that allows me to adjust it. And the other reason is, the blade is blunt, I even had to put some extra pressure on myself. It's always good to have a sharp blade when cutting brass, because generally speaking, this metal is a bit slippery, and if the blade is blunt, it skates over the top. Once again it's back to the lathe and this time I'm making the column. I need to reduce the size of this piece of brass considerably. It's very wasteful and I could fabricate it, but I prefer to do it this way and have some fun. Did I say have some fun? I really do need to get out more. With the current state of the world situation, I will stick to riding my bike down country lanes all by myself away from everybody and I recommend that everyone else does the same for the moment. Keep your distance and hopefully you'll stay well. Here I'm machining the location peg and as you can see it's a very good fit. Later on in this video you will see that I made this location peg too good a fit. I need the top part of the column to be the same diameter as the thickness of the piece of bar. Now I can machine all the way down at the finished diameter for the top part. To save a bit of time I started winding in the lathe tool to take a deeper cut as I got to the center. Now it's time to change the lathe tool for this one. This is a round nose tool and it's ideal for jobs like this. 
This is an angled round nose tool and it's angled the wrong way. But by rotating the tool post I can get it in the right position to do the job. When you make a part like this be aware that you will need to turn it around in the chuck once you've parted it off. And because of this as I machined the end that's nearest to the camera I kept the same setting and machined the part nearest the chuck. That means that once the component is parted off I can turn it round and fit it in the chuck. That's because I will need to machine the underside of the base, drill a tapping size hole in it for 2BA and thread it. At the moment I'm machining the centre of the column. So the column itself starts wide at the top, is narrow in the middle, gets wider at the bottom and then it meets the base. After I'd finished that part of the job I fitted the parting tool in the holder and parted it off. And then, as I've just mentioned, I turned the part round in the chuck, machined the base flat, I then centre drilled it, followed by drilling a 5 30 seconds of an inch diameter hole, which is tapping size for a 2BA thread. I threaded the hole in the base by hand, I didn't use any automation. After finished machining the base, I loosely assembled the turret and it looks like this. The time has come to silver solder it all together. I'm in the outer part of the workshop on my brazing hearth. I've applied the flux, which is a paste mixed with water, and then this happened. That's why it's not a brilliant idea to make a plug that fits in a blind hole too tight a fit if you're silver soldering. I reassembled it and started again. All the water had long evaporated from the part, and as there isn't any water, there's no steam, which is what was responsible for separating the base from the manifold in the first heating. There's a bit of a different technique required with this amount of heat. The stick of silver solder is melting on the way to the work. I let the part cool to black, then I dropped it in some water to initially remove some of the scale. Then I tied all the parts together with some silicone rubber tubing and lowered them into the acid bath. And I'm going to leave them there for 24 hours. So that is it for this episode, that's as far as I can go. I'd just like to say keep your distance from other people, Stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.